It's that time of year again. Basketball season is underway, and whether you're a fan of professional or college hoops or whatever else, you're bound to find at least some hardcore action going on while flipping through the channels. When it comes to basketball video games, my mind goes straight to NBA Jam, the classic arcade that was ported to just about every console under the sun in its day, but its day just missed the NES life cycle. And is that real basketball anyway, two on two, with outrageous slam dunks and players with comically large noggins? Basketball video games tend to be divided into two groups, five on five imitations of the real thing, and two on two, or if not two, then few on few, if you will. There are quite a few basketball games on the NES, so today we're going to be looking at those five on five imitations of the real thing. They tend to be slower due to all the action 10 players generate that the NES has to compute, and passing always tends to be irritating because with limited inputs and four teammates, it's rather unwieldy to get the ball exactly to who you want. With that mild warning out of the way, let's get to today's game's all-pro basketball, ultimate basketball, Harlem Globetrotters, double dribble, and Tecmo NBA basketball and see what's up. All Pro Basketball gives you the option to play alone, or with or against a friend. You can also select Watch if you just want to see the computer go at itself for fun. You do you. You get a choice of eight teams here. Vic Tokai did not get the NBA license for this one, so players and teams are completely made up. Some come really close to resembling, or at least rhyming with, actual NBA teams of the day like the New York Slicks and the Seattle Sonics. I'll even give points to the Dallas Stallions coming close to the Dallas Mavericks, and the Los Angeles Breakers at least rhymes with the Lakers. After those come the Chicago Zephyrs, the Boston Redcoats, the Phoenix Wings, and the San Francisco Bay Riders. And despite Zephyrs being spelled correctly in the manual, it's spelled incorrectly on the floor during the game. The teams are more than just cities and made-up names, though. The manual shows the breakdown of how each team has its own play style, which I think is a great element of this one. For example, the manual explains how the Seattle Sonics are great at passing and three-pointers, but are not great ball handlers. San Francisco, however, plays intense defense and can shoot the long ball, but they don't pass well, meaning they're ripe for steals. These little scouting reports add some personality to the teams and help the game stand out, in my opinion. When it comes to league play, the game doesn't mess around. You'll have to play each team five times for a total of 35 games in the season. Thankfully, there are passwords and the option to continue your season when you load the game back up again. There's no playoff system here, though. The only way to become a champion is to beat each team at least three of the five times you play them. You and a friend can even team up and run through the season together. The gameplay itself is quite discombobulating. The biggest thing is that this one plays with a vertical court rather than side to side like the other games I'll mention today. A few of the other two on two games I'll mention in part two of this video someday do this, and with fewer players on the court it works much better. With this five on five game, the entire screen goes black, your player is shifted to the opposite side of the floor you were on in order to mirror your position from before, and that ends up feeling like you just walk through a portal into a different dimension. Getting your bearings after crossing half court is something you almost never get used to while playing this one. Shooting is fairly simple, though I found you were better off just finding a fast teammate and have them run around defenders to dunk it if you want some sure points. Passing, on the other hand, is a crapshoot. In addition to just being confusing once you cross half court and not having a good feel for where your teammates are in that moment, telling the game who you want to pass it to ends up being more of a suggestion. One of the issues is that your player is indicated by the number one over their heads, and oftentimes that blends in with the color of the floor, making it tough for you to see exactly who you are. Playing defense is rather difficult too, although I did get the hang of it after a bit. Simply touching the ball will steal it from the other team, and it's important to play aggressively if you want to win. You don't want to get into a high scoring match with the computer. There are some neat zoom ins at the hoop. If you're going for a dunk or a block, the game highlights this action with the zoom to let you see exactly what happened there. Unfortunately, it's the same two or three animations each and every time, so they get old before the end of the first quarter. This one gets a few points for having detailed rosters. Players have individual attributes, which helps this one be more than just sprite on sprite action. They each have their own stats for speed, shooting talent, defensive skill, and of course their height and weight are factors. They also have stamina bars that deplete during the game, and you can sub players in and out. There are also fouls in the game, offensive and defensive and the computer is occasionally guilty as well, which helps add to the realistic imitation they're going for here. After two quarters, you're presented with a halftime show that amounts to just a few cheerleaders dancing around. No t-shirt cannons or mascot races, unfortunately. 
After a game wraps up, you get an egregiously long password for your next game, and then you're interviewed by Tracy, uh... All Sports News? Is that her name? Tracy All Sports News? I think they left out a word there. Either way, Tracy doesn't blink and wants to devour your soul. She does not care who won the basketball game at all. If that wasn't bad enough, if you're the winning coach, you're greeted with a clip of yourself grinning with a face that says you like to feed hitchhikers to pigs. I mean, my goodness. Next is Ultimate Basketball, and cutting straight to the chase here, ultimately, it is pretty low on today's list. Like the previous game, Ultimate Basketball lets you play by yourself, or with, or against a friend, and if you lead a miserable life, you can watch Ultimate Basketball play with itself, which could arguably be more fun than playing it. I'll get to it. You have a choice to play a single game or compete in a tournament. In the tournament, you'll be placed in a bracket, and you'll have to win three consecutive games to earn the trophy. The difficulty of those games are assigned randomly, which is interesting and kind of sucks. Each period is five minutes long and makes each game last about 10 minutes total all set. There are seven teams to choose from, and as with all pro basketball, there are no licenses here, but you do get some of those NBA-adjacent mascots, like the Houston Comets being a dollar store version of the Houston Rockets. There are some weird ones though, like the New York Powers and the Detroit Unions. I mean, I get why the Detroit Unions make sense, but I'm not sure why you'd want that as a mascot. This game, and the rest of the games we'll cover here today, play out horizontally. And straight up, I'm not sure you can pass forward in this game. I'm just gonna say it. I did pass forward sometimes, but it was usually when I wasn't meaning to. Your player will have an eye over their head, and the player you're going to pass it to has an arrow over theirs. And even with that visual confirmation, Good luck passing to who you intend to. It's hard to explain, truly. The other team will steal your passes left and right, too. And they play a smothering style of defense, absolutely smothering. And because of that, you'll be hit with charging violations constantly. So you need to craftily move down the court with a zigzag strategy and rely on the crapshoot passing mechanics to advance the floor because the opponents only run a full court press defense. It's like tiptoeing through a swarm of bees. Another thing about this one is dunking is too complicated. Those are the two most integral parts of basketball, and both passing and dunking are a pain. Shooting a jump shot is not so bad, but dunking requires multiple button presses. When going up for a dunk, the game zooms into the action and you have to press B again on the meter. As you're watching this, you think, oh, that meter's slow, I could totally nail that dunk. I thought the same thing, but the timing has to be very precise. If you don't hit it right, it's not that you miss the dunk or layup, you just don't let go of the ball at all. So it's like you went up for a dunk and then just didn't let go. It looks bafflingly stupid. And with that, there are no blocks. If you defend an opponent's dunk or layup, they just don't let go of the ball, settling for a traveling violation over a missed shot. Sometimes you get a zoomed-in three-point shot for no reason, and to be fair, the zoomed-in cutscenes look good, even if they do needlessly break up the action. This one also has a halftime show. That is, again, void of a mascot riding a unicycle while juggling fire batons. Boring. And if you lose, there's a dramatic shot of your team walking through a tunnel. I saw this shot a lot after my first few games. There are plenty of other annoyances here. For example, you can't call a timeout to substitute your players. You have to wait for a violation to occur. Lucky for you, you'll either get called for charging, or someone will travel if you just wait five seconds. When you do go to substitute, you'll find the game does have some depth. Players experience fatigue throughout the game, and they have individual stats for speed, strength, and defense. And they have different headshots without much repetition, which is a nice touch. Someone cared when making this part in particular. I've been pretty hard on Ultimate Basketball, and it's definitely not good. But like anything else, practice helps. The more games you play, the better your experience with it will get. And it's not that the game gets better or anything, you just get used to overcoming all of the wicked jank it hurls at you. Be aggressive on defense, and figure out that dunk timing, and you should see results swing in your favor. For those uninitiated, the Harlem Globetrotters are an exhibition basketball team that are more theater and comedy than competitive basketball. They break the rules a bit to wow the audience as they take on their arch nemesis, slash Patsy, the Washington Generals. And with that, you might not be surprised to find there are only two teams in this game, the Harlem Globetrotters and the not Harlem Globetrotters, the Washington Generals. See, the game's menu is a questionnaire 
hey, you want to play against the computer? That's the game asking if you want to play one or two players. Then, hey, do you want to be the Harlem Globetrotters? Answering no makes you the generals. How many players are on your team? This is the game asking you again if you want to play multiplayer, but on the same team. See how needlessly complicated this is? Also, the game defaults to 12 minute quarters, and feel free to do that if you have the whole day ahead of you, otherwise you'll want to knock that down a bit. Eventually, after your job interview, you get to play some basketball. The presentation is expectedly bland. There are no names or rosters here, although the game is apparently based on the 1989 version of the two teams. As you play, the players you control are indicated by their uniform changing color. It is not a good design choice because there can be four different colored uniforms on the floor at any one time. The two teams' normal colors, and then whoever has the ball for the other team, and whoever you control on defense. There are no other game modes. You play as the Globetrotters, or against the Globetrotters, in a game. You can vary the game length, but that's it. You can do a few tricks, though, and interestingly, doing trick shots and passes as the Trotters lead to more sure results. Trick shots go in more often. Trick passes are rarely intercepted. You do regular passes and shots with A and B, and trick shots by simply pressing either select or start. It's super simple. It means this game has next to no challenge, unless you play as the Generals, but even then it's not the worst. You can do things like cartwheel dunks and other fancy moves, and I'm not sure how you trigger them specifically. But if you take enough trick shots, you'll see different animations eventually. Like you might see the referee slide across the floor like he's about to do a three count on a pro wrestling pin. That's all this one has to offer. And it's not much at all. The controls feel floaty, there's only two teams, there's no depth, and no reason to play this one over any of the others. Next up is Double Dribble, and in case you didn't know, Double Dribbling is a violation. That would be like naming your football game Holding, or your hockey game Icing. What about Balk for baseball? You can't even double dribble in the game, it won't let you. This one was common to living rooms in the late 80s, thanks to it being developed and published by Konami, and it being the first basketball game released on the NES in 1987, ahead of the others by almost two years. It was originally an arcade game, and a popular one at that. The NES port tries its best to emulate the arcade, but has the expected shortcomings of being slower, less visually appealing, and without the ever-present shot clock the arcade version had. Out the gate, Double Dribble is way too impatient. If you don't press start on the main screen within a handful of seconds, you're assaulted by this alarmingly blinding cutscene monstrosity. This image looks like someone took a picture with a Game Boy camera and then tried to color it in using MS Paint. Other parts of this game are rough looking too. After you decide whether you want to play alone or with a pal, you're then greeted by this animation, which I suppose is supposed to be fans rushing into the arena, but looks more like the smoke monster from Lost attacking a circus, which honestly would be awesome. The game's options are very limited, but keep in mind, this was the first NES basketball game, so it gets some slack. There are only three teams to choose from based on three American cities, New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles. There are three difficulty levels, and you can adjust the quarter length, and that's it. The menu is needlessly slow. Every time you adjust an option, the little basketball player dude has to shoot a basket. Thanks, basketball player dude. Good job. Finally to basketball. A few things of note here. It's 5 on 5, but not all of your players play offense or defense at the same time. Two of your AI controlled teammates will hang back on the other side of half court, so offense is 3 on 3 and defense is 2 on 2. I'm not sure if it was programmed this way to cleverly get around the cluttered screen we've experienced in the other 5 on 5 games where all 10 players are crammed on the same end of the court, or if the developers had weak basketball knowledge. I'll accept either answer, because there are a few things that don't make sense like all fouls, even offensive ones, result in the other team shooting free throws. Players jump when they shoot free throws like they're in second grade. And one thing every single one of these games do is have a tip-off for every quarter instead of an inbound pass based on possession. But again, Double Dribble isn't alone there. I think of today's games, passing to your intended teammate is easiest in Double Dribble compared to the other games, and it's likely because not all of your players are on the same end of the floor at once, so give and take there, I guess. The game is decently paced, and there are moments of fun where maybe you pass to a teammate running under the hoop for a nice pass and dunk moment that feels awesome. But that wears thin quickly, because this one is just too easy, and it all comes down to stealing and shooting the corner three. You can steal at will. You just run up to an opponent with your player and tap A and boom, now you have the ball. You might foul them 1% of the time, so it's worth it. 
You also cannot go wrong with the Corner 3, as you might recall from that Family Guy episode where Peter keeps stealing it from Cleveland and nailing that Corner 3. Bring it up to court, and Corner 3! No, no, that's what I'm talking about! That said, the opponents also have a strong steal ability, and I noticed this game does have some serious rubber banding, so if you get out to a lead, the other team will storm back with some rather annoying heroics, but at least that adds challenge. Otherwise, you're just stealing and scoring your way to a 30-point victory, and since there are no other game modes here outside of playing one game against another team, it can get rather lame. As with a few of the other games today, there's occasionally a slam dunk cutscene, and even in the cutscene, you can miss the dunks, and that happens often. I'm not sure if it's random or what, but sometimes the ball just doesn't go in. Of course, this one also has a halftime show, and yeah, we've seen this with the others, just a bunch of cheerleaders dancing, and whoa! Is that a moose? What? The, is that? Is that a frog? Whoa! So yeah, this one gets extra points for having mascots awkwardly shuffle down the floor as if they're confused about where they should be. I love that. All in all, nostalgia is going to drive this one for some folks, but it's ultimately too thin of an experience to net any fun beyond a couple of games. That said, and this is true for all these games, playing against a friend amplifies everything. Lastly, and best of all, Tecmo NBA Basketball. Finally, an NBA licensed basketball game. If Tecmo made a sports game in the NES era, you were bound to have a good time. One interesting thing is that the first title screen says Super Pro Basketball, which makes me think this was a placeholder just in case the NBA said nah about the licensing, but they never removed it. Anyway, if you've ever played a Tecmo sports game before, namely the Tecmo Bowl and Tecmo Super Bowl football games that I've yet to cover here on this channel, then this menu system will be familiar to you. Out the gate, you can view player data profiles and get some fairly detailed information about the teams. You can even play a full 82-game season if you have that kind of time on your hands. You can select a coach or man-specific teams, meaning you can just call the plays and let the teams play themselves. A mode one notch above watch. This one does a fantastic job at just about everything it tries to do if you really appreciate that it's on the NES. It has all the teams, it has close-ups of key plays, it is very fluid, although you get some flicker with all the sprites moving around at once, and you get all the rosters from the 1991-92 season, including Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan didn't license himself for many video games back in the day, and he's on two for the NES, the other being Jordan vs. Bird we'll cover in a future episode. So anyway, you have the ability to play as Jordan, and plenty of other legends from the day. Gameplay is fun, passing makes sense, but it's still not easy to select who you want to pass it to here as all these games suffer from. Running plays as a coach is even kind of fun. There's no real feedback on whether the play you entered was received by the game and understood by the players, but if you have an eye for basketball, you'll be able to spot your influence. There are no other frills here, no halftime shows, no post-game interviews with terrifying looking coaches, and if I had to have one gripe, it would be that even if you set your quarters to say five minute lengths, the other games simulated in the season still use full length quarters. So while you might play games that end with like 50 or 60 points per team, the rest of the teams are finishing up with like 115 to 110 endings, so the seasonal stats don't compile accordingly. But that's me being a sports and stats nerd. Tecmo NBA Basketball is a great basketball game on the NES and the go-to if you want to play something akin to the real deal basketball on the system. Well, we've gone on long enough here today, and that's going to do it for 5-on-5 five -five basketball games on the NES. I think it's pretty clear that Tecmo NBA Basketball is the best choice overall. I'd put All Pro next, despite how dizzy it can make you from the vertical flip-flopping. Double Dribble and Ultimate Basketball hang out firmly in the middle for me. Harlem Globetrotters dwells down at the very bottom. I'm not sure Harlem Globetrotters needed to be a game, really. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. As always, don't feed hitchhikers to pigs, look out for giant lost frogs, and thanks for watching.